Have you built a business that you no longer enjoy? Uh, this happens all the time. If you find yourself in this place, you are not in the boat alone. That's why I have a special guest with me today that is going to help. We're going to dig into the four pillars of meaningful work, how to create a business you'll love, and much more. Hi, I am Tim Fitzpatrick with Rialto Marketing, where we believe you must remove your revenue roadblocks to accelerate growth and marketing shouldn't be difficult. Thank you so much for taking the time to tune in. Super excited to have Dan Cumberland with me from the Meaning Movement. Dan, welcome and thanks for being here. Love it. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just so pumped to be with you here today. Yes, I'm looking forward to digging into this. Uh, it's It's not uncommon for us to like, start to build this business and we reach a point where we're like, gosh, this isn't what I thought it was going to be. Yes. hundred <laughs> percent. And this is, you know, the reason I'm passionate about this topic is because I've been there more times than I want to admit. Um, and so it's, you know, you're in good company. Anyone watching, listening who uh, is like, yeah, this, this is hitting close to home very much. I've, I've, you know, I've got some scars to, to, to show, uh, show my work on this, on this, this topic. So. <laughs> Uh, awesome. Well, I'll try and uh, add as much value and interject here uh, when I when I can. So yes. Um, before we get rolling, I want to ask you some rapid fire questions. You ready to jump in? Let's go. I'm okay. ready. When you're not working, how do you like to spend your time? I have three kids that are um, seven, four, and two, and I spend my time with them when I'm um, just playing, having fun as a family, going on adventures. Just got back from five weeks in Colombia um, as a kind of a work play trip, which was super great. When I'm not with them, I'm usually you know working out or on a run. Um, so those are the things that I do. What's your hidden talent? Uh, hidden talent is people. I, and I don't know if that's, it feels like a kind of a cop-out answer, but, um, <laughs> I, I just feel like people, people are my superpower. I'm, um, I'm just good with people and, yeah. um, I'm really good at building relationships, maintaining relationships. And, um, I don't know. Everybody likes me. I don't know. I, I, that feels weird to say that, but it's true. <laughs> you're, you're a likable guy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? The best piece of advice, this I kind of struggled with this one, but what came to mind is I've been um, wrestling with this uh, as an entrepreneur. We come to these 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 places where it's like I need to like my income as an entrepreneur. It can be so lumpy and I sometimes need to like find other ways to balance it out and just reach one of those not too long ago. is kind of wrestling with this. And um, a friend of mine is like, you're not it's not whether or not you're an entrepreneur. It's uh, how it's always about a value exchange. And so whether that means you're a um, you're earning earning it on your through your own LLC or your your entity or through someone else's, it doesn't matter. What's happening is people are paying you for the value that you're bringing and the value that you're creating. Um, and it's just a really helpful reframe of, um, you know, that there's not this like dichotomy, like you're an entrepreneur or you're not an entrepreneur. Yeah. Uh, it's just like kind of expanded the conversation. I thought that was just super helpful. You know, it kind of, it's almost like a little bit of an identity shift, yes. right? Yeah. Sometimes as entrepreneurs, if you really identify as an entrepreneur, you're like, oh my God, I can, I can't work for anybody ever. Right. Exactly. exactly. Um, but it's, yeah, it's, it, I love that. It's a yeah. really good reframe. Yeah, um, yeah. What's one thing about you that surprises people? Um, what what came to mind on this one is uh, I've been a vegetarian for like, I don't know, 19, 20, almost 20 years now. Um, I, I like I like to say, especially the identity piece, uh, I eat plant-based. I'm not like, you know, a hardcore, um, <laughs> hardcore vegetarian. Um, but that, that surprises people. They're like, that's that's not uh, not what people expect. Um I also uh, only eat one one meal a day. These are both food related, um, and so I, I do intermittent fasting and um, only yeah only eat one meal a day, and that's that's kind of weird. Um, so yeah, those are a couple. So couple you of... only eat one plant based email, uh, meal a day. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So did you get, did you become vegetarian for a specific? Yeah. reason was it a belief thing what, what yeah it was, was uh started as a health thing i had a lot of like um stomach issues growing up and and when i was in college started like experimenting experimenting with my diet just felt better with like fewer greasy things um yeah. which 
typically be, you know, um, especially like red meats. Um, and then like started just learning about, you know, the ethics of, I mean, just the, the meat industry is a dirty industry. Um, and then also the, you know, environmental impact of, of our food choices, of all of our choices, but yeah. the, the biggest way to make a, a positive change on, on, on the planet is to, to decrease your, your meat consumption. Um, and, um, and so like the longer, I guess the more I've done it, the more I'm like, this is a good thing for everybody involved. So, yeah. um, and it's really good for you. You know, it's interesting, man. I, um, I do eat meat, but I do eat a fair amount of fruits and vegetables, but I read something a while back and I'm sure these statistics are changing all the time, but it shocked me how much, how many resources it takes to raise Yes. Beef specifically, beef but also specifically. pork and any yeah. other animals. Beef is the worst as far as I understand 100%. it. But yep. the resources, I mean, the water, the food, yep. and All of it. the acreage that it takes compared to plant-based is mm -hmm. mind-boggling. Yes, yes. The three biggest, so I'm also a volunteer with the Carbon Almanac, which is a project um, that Seth Godin started all around climate change and, and um you know, try, trying to try to make the earth a better place. Uh, but there's uh, in the Carbon Almanac, we talk talk about like the three big C's. So these are the three the three areas of the biggest um, negative impact on on uh, an environment that produce carbon. It's the reason it's called the Carbon Almanac. Carbon is part of the problem. It's cows, concrete and coal. And those are those three. If we could solve those three problems, we would just be in much, much better shape as a as a planet. Um, but to your point, just the resources that it takes to to raise a cow is just, you know, I don't, I don't have the data in front of me, but it's just so it's much lot. greater. It's a lot yeah. than, than, you know, other, other forms of meat even, and also plants. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Uh, sorry. I went off, I went off track yeah. on, the, <laughs> on the rapid <laughs> fire questions. But... <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what does success mean to you? Success to me means freedom. It means spending time with my family. Um, and it means, um, yeah, I guess with that freedom piece, like having, having the, con like having control over my time and how I'm spending my time and being able to make choices, um, about, you know, what I'm doing, when I'm doing it and who I'm doing it with. Where's your happy place? My happy place is, um, my house with my, my kids, my family, all, 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 uh, in a big pile on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> T tickle, uh. a tickle fight. <laughs> yes, there you go. Uh, what qualities do you value in the people you spend time with? The qualities I value most are um, integrity and honesty. Um, I value um, ownership. Um, like, and what I mean by ownership, I'm very much influenced by Jocko Willink's, um, you know, extreme ownership, like that you're fully responsible for all the outcomes in your life. Even if you're, uh, maybe it's not your fault. If you touched it, you're responsible. Um, that is a very admirable trait that I try to, to lead with. And when I see that in other people, um, it just, you know, I'm just a fan. Um, but yeah, those are, those are the main ones that come to mind. So, um, Dan, tell us more about what you're doing. Yeah. The meaning movement. Yeah. Yeah. The meaning movement has been an ever evolving um, project that started. It's really where I started my entrepreneurial journey. Um, went to went to grad school around these questions of how do we help people figure out what to do with their lives in that program? You know, coming back to this entrepreneurial identity piece that we already have mentioned, mentioned um, kind of came to, to name that I, I love starting things and love to to. Um, yeah, to, to have my hands in a lot of projects um, that maybe I'm an entrepreneur started this project to really help people uh, figure out those big those big questions over the last couple of years. It has pivoted from, you know, more of like life direction, career direction to really thinking about um, business and life direction for entrepreneurs. So kind of this Venn diagram of the business that you're building and the life that you're living and the crossover between the two. So really helping people build businesses that they love for the long haul. And it's come from my own um, struggle with yeah, as, as a mission driven entrepreneur, someone who really believes in the things that I'm doing a number of times throughout my career, I've been guilty of just chasing so hard after that goal of the destination that I have in mind, this business I want to, 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 to build, the lives I want to impact, all these things that I end up sacrificing my day to day to a life that I don't love in order to achieve that, that goal, to, to get to that destination with the business that ultimately 
uh, may never arrive. I and mean, I've had a couple couple of these wake up call moments when I've when you know I things have you know gone sideways on me for different reasons and had to reevaluate: is this how I want to be living my life? Because I know that that future might not arrive because of yeah. business, you know, because of business reasons, because of health reasons, because of, you know, um, uh, economic changes, you know, all these things are so much out of our control. And so um, I've been really passionate about helping people assess how, how are we defining success? How are we measuring success and optimizing our path in entrepreneurship for the journey, not just for the destination. Yeah. I oh, mean, dude, I, you're speaking my language, man. I've fallen, <laughs> I've fallen yeah. into that trap multiple times. Um, yeah. You got to find joy in the, in the journey yes. and not the destination is important, but mm -hmm. it, I think as entrepreneurs, sometimes we get so caught up in the, the destination that we're not happy until we get there. And yeah. it's this, it's this ideal that just is constantly moving. Yes. Um, yes. So, and I feel like so often it's like we get there and it's just a false summit because it's not quite right. everything that we thought it was going to be. And it's like, okay, yeah. now, now, now what? And especially if we've, and this is a big part of it is that especially if we haven't been pacing ourselves. Right. And so we, we don't have anything left in the tank. You get to the top of the summit and you're like, I made it. And I also have to, you know, equally as far still to go. And I've right. got nothing left to get me there, whether that be, you know, emotional resources, financial resources, or just like, you know, just the, the, uh, yeah, I guess that's the emotional piece. Like the, just the desire to like get up and keep going. Uh, yeah. It's a heavy lift. So what's, what's the most important skill entrepreneurs need that no one's talking about? I love this. It is in my mind, uh, it is having enough gas in the tank to have another try. And the reason I, I say that is so often the entrepreneurial conversation focuses on this specific endeavor, the business that you're building right now, the marketing you know, uh, lever you're pulling that's working so well for you. And I think it's very influenced by survivorship bias. And so when you're listening to the podcast and, the, uh, and someone's you know, telling about all their, their success or whatever they're doing that's working, what they're not talking about is all the other things that they did that didn't work. And a successful entrepreneur isn't, in my mind, defined by how successful their present business is, but how long they've been able to play the game. Because entrepreneurs, as as if you zoom out of that specific business, that specific you know endeavor, and look at where they've been, most entrepreneurs have to keep trying and keep failing multiple times in order to get there. So that means the implications of this um, is that like, don't go all in. <laughs> it's it's. Uh, you know, make sure that you're balancing your risk appropriately so that if the thing that you're building right now crashes and burns, you can have another chance at that. Um, and I think that that's the narrative. That's the story that that I want to hear more people talking about in, in as we talk about entrepreneurship. That is not just about building this business or that, but there's this other journey, this bigger journey that we're all on, um, that this story right now is just one chapter of that bigger narrative. I think it's so easy for us to, uh, we see the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. when we look at other business yes. owners and we're yes. not seeing all that stuff below the surface. Yes. Um, you know, I interviewed, um, I interviewed somebody uh, a couple of weeks ago and he was talking about how, you know, when he initially bought his business, you know, it was doing like 250 grand a year, um, bought it. And he was like, Tim, for 18 years, I could not crack a million dollars in revenue. 18 that, years. That so and long. this is a guy that you look at and you're like, damn, this guy has a lot of stuff going on. Very successful, multiple businesses. And he's like, dude, I couldn't figure it out. 18 years. And then something happened and it, it clicked. that lever just changed everything for him. Wild. Um, but 18 years. Like it's most so people would have given up long before yeah um and i think too many people don't share those things yeah. and you just you know it's it's like a social media is like the highlight reel right you're seeing the highlight reel you're like oh my god like they just they totally hit it but you don't see like 
most of, I talk about this all the time from a marketing standpoint. Most of the marketing we do fails. Yes. That's the reality yeah. of it. Most of it fails, but we learn from all those failures and that helps us find the things that work and the things that work make all the failures worth it. Worth it. Right. Um, 100%. Same 100%. thing for anything in our business. Like we're I always totally trying things. So I love the fact that you're, <laughs> that you're talking about that. Yes. Yes. Um, I think like what, exactly what you said about the, you know, take the, take your approach to marketing and then take, expand that from a marketing channel to the business itself. Right. And yeah. the business endeavor. And that's exactly what we're talking about. You got to try. Sometimes it's not going to work. Um, businesses should, you know, businesses often should end, right. To free you up yeah. to do the next thing. Um, we don't talk about you. We don't talk about that. Instead, the, the narrative, our, our culture values grit. We value, you know, like in the story like that too, for like, 18 years you keep going keep going yeah. um but like along the way like for some folks it's like yeah keep going you tried that business that business wasn't a good idea maybe and maybe it needs to end or whatever it might be and like yeah. um to find that balance and to make your own path i think that's the other the other piece is that your journey has to be your own and it's not going to follow every other uh entrepreneur's journey yeah yeah they're all different right yeah 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 there's no uh there's no one right path yes yes so what would you say when we started talking about mistakes? Yes. Uh, what are what are the hidden million dollar mistakes entrepreneurs make? Yeah, these I think, you know, when you think about the, the major pitfalls, the major traps or landmines for for entrepreneurs, most of the conversation, most of the time, our minds go to, you know, the, the major you know business mistakes of, of marketing campaigns, of legal things, of, you know, whatever it might be. But the biggest mistakes in my mind that entrepreneurs make are the mistakes of pacing, the mistakes of sacrificing too much in order to achieve what, they, what they're chasing after. So those million dollar mistakes are not caring for their relationships and their health you know, not um, not spending enough time with their family and their friends, not having um, a life outside of their work. All these things that we, uh, you know, are quick to sacrifice in because we have a passion for what we're what we're building. But you fast forward your life, you know, 10, 15, 20, however many years. And, you know, if your health goes sideways on you and you realize, well, it's because I haven't, you know, been moving my body and caring for my body and eating well for the last 20 plus years because I've been so focused on my business, how much is that worth for you? Or you don't have a relationship with your kids because all the time that while they were growing up, you were so focused on, on, you know, work, on building your yeah. business that you didn't spend time with them how much would you give to have a healthy relationship, a caring, a loving relationship with, with your kids? And I'd say these are the most expensive mistakes that, um, that entrepreneurs make. We would give anything and everything um, to change those. And yet the way we live our lives in the present often doesn't reflect that future, uh, that future goal and that future definition of what success, uh, success looks like. So those are, are the you know, many million dollar mistakes that we make along the way. It's almost, I mean, like when you look at your relationships, I mean, it's almost like those aren't million dollar mistakes. They're like priceless, right? Yes, um, exactly. And uh, yeah, gosh, you dropped so much stuff here. I'm, uh, my, like, all these things are <laughs> popping into my head. Yeah. Like with pacing, I, we are wired as humans for short-term gratification. We see this yeah. in marketing all the time. Yes. People expect immediate results. Because there's a lot of marketers out there that are over-promising, under-delivering. And the reality is it takes time. Yes. Like we have to go into this, not only from a marketing standpoint, from a business standpoint, we need to think long-term. If yep. we think long-term instead of short-term, we're going to make much, much better decisions. Yes. yes. And it seems like, it seems to me like this pacing that you're talking about, really, we make pacing errors because mm -hmm. we're thinking short-term. Am I yep. right? Yes, absolutely. And it's thinking short term and also looking at um, looking at a very narrow definition of success or like or the wrong metrics. Right. Like Got we're it. looking at our, our P&L. We're not looking at our family. Um, right. Yeah. You know, those, those, those kinds of things. And so some of this is like to bring that what I'm hoping to invite people to. 
uh, is to, to bring awareness to like, how, how are you defining success? Which I love that you know, that's one of your rapid fire questions. <laughs> but then the, what I want to follow it up with is how do you measure that success and how are you measuring your progress toward that success um, in the here and now, which means like, like quantify as much as you can, like, how are you, you know, how healthy are you? Uh, mm -hmm. How are your relationships with your, with your partner or spouse, with your kids, with your community? How is, you know, if you're, if you have a faith background or spirituality, like how is, how are you doing with that side of your life? All of these things that like can so easily um, just be very am amorphous because like money is easy to measure, right? It's, it's dollars in the bank account. It's a number on a spreadsheet. Yeah. Um, but how can we quantify some of these other areas of life so that we can track those success metrics in parallel with, you know, the, the financial success metrics. You know, one of the, have you ever read uh, awaken the giant from Tony Robbins? I have not read that one. Okay. It's uh, I just got done reading this. Honestly, I've had the book for a long time. It's like really thick, isn't it? Uh, it's, yeah. It's huge. I've, I've, it's been, over... I've been really intimidated by yeah, it. It's, yeah. It's, it's, it's not like, Oh man. It's a, it's a long one. You got to be dedicated. It's over 500 pages. Wild. But um, there are so many fundamental uh, things that he talks about in there. And one of them, as you're talking, is coming to my mind. He's talking like your success metrics. Yes. One of the things that's really important is that we make it easy for us to hit those metrics. Right. Mm. Yes. And those metrics. Yeah. Yeah must be things that we can control, right? If our metrics are based on things that are beyond our control, yes. we're already setting ourselves up for failure, right? And, and so we're automatically, we're going to be unhappy because we yep. can't control it. So he talks about this, you know, this, this mindset or this principle of just, Hey, when you set your metrics, mm -hmm. you need to be able to hit them and you need yeah. to be able to hit them by yourself. Because mm. if you make the metrics too hard, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're going to yep. be unhappy, right? Yeah. Which sucks. Yes. I love that. And so I think so many of us, you know, we're all, we're as entrepreneurs, we all talk about, you know, I got to set my smart goals and they set my stretch goals, go 10 X. Uh -huh. uh -huh. But I, we, we also need to be realistic about some of the yep. metrics that we're going to use. And if we can't hit them, we're just, yep. man, we're going to, we're like beating ourselves down every day. Totally. It, it, and you know, where, where I go with that is just even thinking about like my relationship with my kids and like, sometimes it's hard. Um, and I don't, yes. I don't know, Tim, if you, if you have yeah. kids, but like, I, sometimes kids. It's like I, I wish that I could spend one hour with one of my kids and then come away from that feeling like I'm succeeding as a, as a father. But the reality is sometimes they're grumpy. Sometimes I'm grumpy. Sometimes it's not fun. Um, and so then how do I, so then it's much easier for me to go back to, okay, let's look at, you know, let's, let's go back to the business. Let's work on the business because at least there I can pull some levers and see that I'm making a difference. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, so like, I think what, what I, you know, as I, as you're talking about um, Tony Robbins framework, it's like even thinking about those areas of life that like, my relationship with my kids isn't necessarily shouldn't necessarily be measured on how fun was it for me and them to hang right. out yesterday afternoon. But like, am I spending enough time? Am I showing up? Do they know, do they have a good sense of who I am and what yeah. I care about? Like some of those bigger things so that then it, we're more resilient in the shorter term yeah. so that we don't just say, well, that's too hard. And this is subconscious because I don't think anyone would say that, but I do think we sometimes feel this way. I think, especially as, as men, um, but like, like let's do that. We'll do the easier thing, which is to build our business and, and, you know, yeah. and, and, you know, do, do work rather than the harder relational feeling thing of yeah. being with our kids and, you know, growing relationships. So one of the common metrics we might default to with our kids is I'm going to spend X amount of hours a week with yep. my kids. Right. Yep. To me, it's, we're like, unless you know, your, your schedule is completely set. You're yep. setting yourself up for failure with a metric like that. Whereas, mm -hmm. you know, maybe it's, maybe you set up a, a simple metric, right? It's like, look, I'm going to hug my kids and tuck them into bed every night. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, or, you know, somebody, I was in a group for a while and, the guy was talking about how he wrote his kids a note mm. every day. And I'm like, dude, okay, I can, you know, I can do that. I yes. think. Um, 
And I started to do that. I'm not as great about writing it, but I do yeah. try to, um, you know, just make sure I'm talking to my kids each and every day. But yeah. the interesting thing, Dan, is I like realized at some point, it was probably like two or three months after I had been doing it, my kids were saving, had a, the stack of these notes. Oh, that's in, so touching to me. Yeah, it, 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 like these notes were are in their room, in their dresser. Wow. They were, it was in a drawer or something. I had incredible. no idea they were saving these things, right? So incredible. Um, But that's just one of those little things that we don't think about. Yes. Um, That's a cool metric that yeah. we can hit, right? Yeah. Yes that helps us feel like we're being successful and we're reaching our objectives. Yes. Um, I feel like it's so, such a beautiful, I mean, it's such a beautiful story. Thank you for sharing that. And like what, a, like a perfect picture of how much we don't realize the impact of yeah. the small things that we do on our kids. Yeah. And one thing that I've, I've done and, and try to do is just to ask myself the question, how about each one of my kids each day, just, consciously sit and think about the question how can i best love that kid today and then do that and it might be a note it might be a hug it might be like you know you're spending more time with them it might be you know yeah. i don't know throwing a ball with them or like whatever but like how could how, what are the things that i could do today with the, the constraints that i have of my time and their time and all these other things like wh what can i do that to to make them feel loved by me yeah um I feel like if everyone was asking those questions about their kids every day, like I think the world would change to be honest. Yeah. Oh, it, it totally would. And you know, like, well, like la the la latter part of last year, um, my family was going through some tough stuff and I saw a, a message on Facebook. Um, somebody that I'm connected with was talking about somebody else posted and he commented on there and he was talking about, you know, one of the things that I, I always told my kids was it's okay to not be okay. Mm, and yeah. uh, man, dude, it like stopped me right in my freaking tracks. Yeah. And like that day I told my kids that. And yeah. uh, honestly, dude, it's like kind of, it makes me stop right now. Yeah. Um, because so many times we don't talk about that. And um, you know, I was like, I was just like, God, you guys like come and talk to me. Like, yeah. I don't want you to, uh, gosh, struggle alone. Right. Yeah. Yes. Um, yes. And it's, you just never know. You, you gotta have that open communication. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's like, gosh, if my kids feel comfortable enough coming to me to talk to me, mm. I feel like I'm doing something, I'm doing something. Okay. Right. A, that's, I mean, that's <laughs> a success metric right there. Right. When your kid comes to you with something vulnerable, like, yes, you know, uh, yeah. It means you're doing you're doing it well. That's a, that's a good yeah. lag measure, right? We're talking about the lead measures of like right. the time and the the notes and like and then that's a lag measure to be like, okay, this is working. We're, we're yes, we're, we're in a good we're moving in a good direction. Yeah, it's really beautiful. Yeah, and just knowing that we're uh, we're all we're all freaking figuring it out as we go. Uh, so true. So in true. in in family, business, life in general. So all of uh, it. All of none it. of us have it all figured out. Yes. Um, yes. So I want to talk about the four pillars. Yes. Um, what are the four pillars of meaningful work? And then we can mm -hmm. kind of start to go down this path of how do we build a business that yes. we're going to love for the long haul? I love that. I love that. Yeah. So in my research, both this was my, you know, my master's degree and then all the work that I've done the last, you know, uh, I guess it's been 10 plus years that um, since I've started down this path with the meaning movement, there's four, four areas of life where we find in work, where we find meaning. And uh, this is true of people who are building your own businesses. Also true of, uh, you know, if you have a job working, you know, with the team, whatever it might be, it's, it's true across, across the board. Okay. And th I started my, I started my career as a pastor. So they all, they all alliterate, they all start with P. Uh, the first is, is the people. So that's the people that you work with, the people that you um, work for, coworkers, employees, um, managers, um, even customers. That's one place where you can find a lot of meaning in those relationships. Okay. The next is 
the process. That's the day in, day out of doing, actually doing the work. It's really easy to stereotype this of, as a, you know, the artist that just like, wants to wants to create or the writer that just wants to write or the coder or developer that just wants to code or the, the accountant that just wants to balance all the books and have everything line up all perfect. It's just whatever it is that you're spending your time on the day in, day out of, of the activity. For some folks, like um, they're, that can that in and of itself can make for a really meaningful you know work endeavor. Um, the product is the next one. So this is um, the outcome of the work that you are that you are doing. So um, as a you know as business owners, it's the the business what the business the problem that the business is solving the the the, the product of your business solves for employees and people you know who are working on teams. Maybe it's you know the contribution of your team to the organization or maybe the organization in and of itself. That can be a really great place to find meaning. Um, and then finally, it's the, um, the, the profit or the um, payoff. You can use either of those words there, which is that's the money. It's the lifestyle. It's the um, amenities that 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 work expression can um, allow, you know, give to, to you. And across those four areas, I think of them kind of like dials on a dashboard. The higher you have those dials turned up, the more satisfying and the more fulfilling that work expression is going to be and also the the lower those are the more tension the more frustration um the more um yeah dissatisfaction you'll feel along the way and then yeah. there's interesting thing can happen where if some of those are really high and others are really low, it can create this kind of cognitive dissonance where you, you, you feel like this should be a great thing that I'm doing. This should be a great business that I'm building, but it's not working for me. What's wrong? What's wrong with me? This is particularly true if that product piece, you know, if you're very mission driven, you're doing good work that's you know changing the world in a really positive way, but you're under resourced, you're you know fighting with your coworkers, you're not getting you're not getting paid, and you don't like the work that you you don't like the day in day out yeah. of your job, and so you're like I'm doing such good work and it's like sucking my soul dry how does it like <laughs> how do i reconcile those things and it's really true i mean especially in the nonprofit world you see a lot of people get burnt out from nonprofit world because of this exact thing because they do work that they care about but then all the other pieces are are out of place it's so as a framework that then you can do a couple things with one is use those as lenses to look at what you're doing right now and look for opportunities to again go back to that dial analogy to turn up that, those dials a little bit to lean in a little bit more to the people that you work with or lean in more to the process and like doing more of the, the parts that you love and, 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 you know, outsourcing or handing off the other parts of your, your work. Um, and then as you grow your business, use those as ways to, to measure how you are, um, how your business is aligning with your work preferences. So there's another layer on top of your success metrics, right? This is about the, the business itself and yeah. how you feel in that business. These are ways that you can, um, yeah, apply, apply, find it, the areas to apply pressure or apply effort in order to make that a more fun, more fulfilling experience. It seems like, uh, so you touched on, I love the fact that you touched on this because I was thinking like, if I don't like one of these P's as an entrepreneur, yeah. I don't have to be in it, right? Yeah, I can right. put somebody else in there. That's going to allow me to raise the dial in the other areas and yes. keep keep myself happy. Yeah. It seems like, man, it, we as entrepreneurs or business owners, we have to have very strong self-awareness mm -hmm. and we have to have a very clear understanding of what we want. Yes. If we don't have those two things, we're bound to run into a lot of problems. 100% true. 100% true. So I, with the meeting movement, I run this accelerator. It's um, I'm in beta. It's in beta right now. I have five folks I'm, I'm running um, with it called um, Bootstrap Without Burnout is the kind of the working title of it. But across the board, everyone in this accelerator is, and it's, it's been incredible because we have these uh, founders and entrepreneurs uh, talking about all the things that we don't talk about, you know, and because there's not another space to talk about them, but about yeah. 
what they want or about the tension that they have between their personal, you know, uh, personal desires and personal goals and the, the business. And there's ways that they align and ways that they don't. And also like business partners and, and like these, you know, where one has one vision, one has another vision. Um, and all that's to say it comes all so much of it circles back to like just needing clarity on what do we actually want yeah. from our business and ultimately from our lives so that we can build the business to help us to help us go there. Those, those, as, as I know it's a first world problem, like to have that that question, but it's a question that um, I think we need support in yeah. really understanding like, how do we answer that? Because there's always trade-offs, right? And there's always yeah. things that you have to give up in order to achieve in certain ways and in certain directions. Um, and those are hard things to really be able to, 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 uh, to have clarity on. Yeah. Well, and sometimes I think we we think we know what we want and then we get to a certain place and we're like, geez, this isn't, this isn't what I wanted. How did <laughs> not this like happen? that. I wanted this, but not like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. It's so true though. Yeah. It's um, you know, and I, the other thing too, that comes to mind for me is just understanding our values. And, mm-hmm. you know, one of my mentors always talked about, you know, when your values are clear, your decisions are easy. Yeah. Um <laughs> And I think a lot of us don't spend enough time thinking about our values and frankly, ranking those values yes. too, because sometimes, uh, you know, our values are out of alignment. Yes. Um, and yeah, I wish we talked more at the beginning of the entrepreneurial journey mm-hmm. about self-awareness values yes. and having clarity on what you want, because I think it would help us avoid a lot of roadblocks that we yep. hit. Yep. Um, Cause I think a lot of us hit roadblocks because of one of one or all of those three things. I totally, I totally agree. And I think that so often we're just, I mean, I, I guess I can only answer it from my own standpoint as an, as an entrepreneur, self-funded entrepreneur, so much of my focus, especially early on has been just like, just, finding just enough success to like, you know, have the bills, have the bills covered. Right. Yeah. And then after that, then it like, and so you're just thinking about like, th- this is mission critical. That's the only thing I can think about. So it's almost like it's, it's hard to ha- even have the mind space to think about, okay, like after that, then what, or right. in addition to that, then what? Um, and I think that's what, where it gets dangerous again, just full circle. Everything we've been talking about here is like, you sure you gotta you gotta pay the mortgage or whatever and you gotta get to, to sustainable sustainable finances and all those things but at some point you have to like zoom out from that conversation to you know what is my life and is this the life that i want to be living yeah so are there once we understand the four pillars yeah are there other things that we need to keep in mind to to build a business that we're going to love for the long haul or what what gaps yeah. do we need to yeah. fill in for so people? i mean the, the the major things um that that i do with with people in the accelerators first clarify what what we want what their business you know and and where they're taking their business bring alignment to those two things set um you know really think about think forward about where do i want to be in 5 to 7 years and then work backwards from that to setting setting goals and metrics for success along the way. And then, um, you know, really a, you know, gap analysis of what, what do I need to do to close the gap between, between here and there. But a a, a big piece of it is to create, is creating a rhythm of checking in with your success metrics that are already, like we've been talking about, uh, just doing some self uh, analysis, you know, whether it be monthly, whether it be quarterly, how am I doing with, you know, relationships, with health, with, you know, all of these, these different areas, the areas that you choose, you choose your life, right? Yeah. You choose the, the, how you want to define that success, but then to have that, that self check-in where you're um, giving some, bringing that like to the forefront, right? Bringing your thought to, to giving yourself a way to, to have um, the, that feedback, even if it's just like, yeah, out of a 10, I've been at like a three when it comes to my fitness journey, right? I haven't hit the miles I wanted to be on my running. I haven't been disciplined and, you know, whatever else. And you're like, okay, that stands out when you look at all these different areas of life, when you put metrics to all these different areas of life as a place where I need to focus and make some changes moving forward. So that's, you know, the, the other, other piece to it is creating this rhythm, this pattern of goal setting and, um, and metrics, you know, uh, success metric um, check-ins. Um, this, this may be, a, this is a little off script here, but yeah. um, 
when you st- when you are talking to people about what they want, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's I think this when we go down this trap of like comparing ourselves to others, you know, you see some entrepreneurs are like they want to build like the biggest freaking business they can, and other yeah. people want just a lifestyle business. Like, do you yeah. what do you say when people run into kind of this like this is all I want? Like, mm-hmm. am I selling myself short? Is that enough, or is it just is it okay to want what I want? Like, yes. does that come up? Yeah, I think it's a really, it's a really important question. Um, I mean, ultimately, what I, I tell people is like, it, it is okay to want what you want. You, you get to choose, right? And I think that's, that's something that like, sometimes it's hard for us to wrestle with. Like, we actually do have agency. We actually do have choice over these, over these matters. And I think that's some of why sometimes we don't have clarity around these things, because we don't, we don't know what to do with the fact that we have choice um but ultimately i think to have to give yourself permission to want what you want is a really important step of the process to in order for you to make sure that the journey that you're on is is actually your own that you're not just following someone else's script for your life and it's i think a transition that we all have to go through at some point especially you know um depending on the messaging, you know, the, the support and your relationship that we have with our, our families of origin and our, our, the, the families we grew up in, the cultures we grew up in, the institutions that we were a part of, all of these like have messages about how we, who we are and how we should make choices and the lives that we should leave lead. And at some point we have to, to say, okay, this is departing from the, um, the script or the path that, you know, X, Y, and Z people or places or, or institutions said I should be on, or this is in line with that script, but I'm still consciously making the choice. And this is my choice. And I think that's a really important moment in, in all of our lives, um, to bring awareness to and to say, okay, I'm, I'm doing this for me, not just because it's what I like I'm supposed to be doing or feel like I should be doing. Uh, I have enjoyed this conversation immensely, Dan. Uh, yeah. Any last minute thoughts you want to leave us with today? Well, first, just want to say thank you, everyone, for for watching um, and and listening in. It just means means the world to get to share about these things. This is stuff that I'm so passionate about. I write about on LinkedIn uh, a couple times a week. If um, these ideas around pacing and success metrics resonate with you, would love to have you follow along there. I also have a um, assessment I've been building um, that's a burnout risk assessment that you can get to at the meaningmovement.com slash start. It, you go there right now in real time, you'll see a waiting page, a landing page where you can opt in. I'll, I'll uh, notify you when it's when it's done. But what um, what I'm building there is a set of questions that will give you a number, basically give you some feedback like we've been talking about to put these metrics in front of you so you can make them actionable based on how uh, how your pace is and how liable you are to encounter you know a real burnout in your um in your entrepreneurial path so beyond that i'd love to help anyone um who you know this resonates with would love to chat love to connect you can um, find me at the meeting movement um or just google my name you'll you'll find me cool i love it so Check out the meaningmovement.com forward slash start. We will make sure that's in the show notes. Dan, thanks for, uh, thanks for taking the time. Like I said, I've enjoyed the conversation. I think people get a ton of value from it. For those of you that are watching, listening, uh, I appreciate you and thank you for doing so. Um, you know, we kind of, uh, this is a little bit different conversation. I'm used to talking a lot about marketing and, and business growth, but man, if we're not taking care of ourselves and we don't understand what we really want, we're never going to get to where we intend to go. So um, super important. Dan, thank you again. Um, If you're, you've hit a ceiling, you're not quite sure how to push through it, right? You've got a revenue roadblock. If you want to discover which of the nine revenue roadblocks are slowing down your growth, you can do that over at revenueroadblockscorecard.com. You can also always connect with us over at rialtomarketing.com. Be happy to chat with you. You can book a discovery call over there and uh, be happy to, to dig into whatever roadblocks you might be facing with your marketing. So thank you again. Until next time, take care. 